is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love old Christmas movies as long as they're remade in the 90s. I'm Alonzo, and I think sometimes older is better, and this is a Dag the Hallmark Podcast. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Monday, another fun time with me, Bran, and my good friend Alonzo. Alonzo, Merry Christmas and Happy Monday to you. Hashtag 25 weeks of Christmas. Happy Monday. Hashtag. Is that hashtag trending yet? I don't think it is, but, you know, we can try. <sighs> ah, ah, daggummit. Very excited about the next, uh, well, this week. And then mm -hmm. we've got some fun things planned as well, we which, we, which we will get to. So lots of fun, crazy things out of these two on a Monday. We're so you, wacky. We're so wacky changing things up. People don't know <laughs> what to expect from us anymore. Uh, last week, we did The Bishop's Wife. Yes. This week, we're doing The Preacher's Wife. Correct. And uh, excited to talk about that. Uh, I, I the, Watching this made me think, and this is obviously a... Uh, a remake or a, a new uh, iteration sure. of a movie. The one that I feel like there's a million of is a, uh, is a Christmas Carol. Yeah. And that is, that's actually the most adapted piece of literature in the English language. So this, this begs the question of why, why <laughs> not like, not that it's not a great story and uh -huh. shouldn't be told, but what, what is it about that one that every couple years someone says, I think it's time because there's going to be a there's going to be one uh, was it will ferrell and yes ryan reynolds gonna, yeah ryan reynolds is going to be in one on apple tv so it's like every couple of years there's one that's like let's just do this again it hasn't been told before what is it about that movie or that I book think, i i think it becomes one of those templates like hamlet or oedipus where it just is this such a basic kind of human story told in such a way that you know, like delivers all these things that you want as far as character and meaning. And, and so, and, and it's very, um, pliable to whatever era you want to make it in, or if you want to make Scrooge a woman, or if you want to make it set in the world of television or, you know, like big business or whatever, like there's all these different ways you can play around with it. And so, you know, I think there are a lot of very straightforward adaptations, which just speaks to right. the strength of the material. But I think the fact that you can also play around with it is something that the people always go, oh, wait, I have an idea. I got a take that we haven't seen before. So has the Christmas Carol uh, template ever been used outside of Christmas? Like where three ghosts come and visit you at a different time of the year. Yes, it has. Uh, there was a Matthew McConaughey comedy from a while ago called um, Ghosts of Girlfriends Past. Right. In which he plays a, a rake, a, a, um, a, a, a operator or playboy type who sort of uh -huh. learns, learns his comeuppance um, from, from his exes. Uh, and then there was this really terrible... Uh, kind of right-wing propaganda movie called An American Carol, and the less said about that, the better. <laughs> oh, well, at least we got uh, just a couple of uh, options there. <laughs> but is, yeah, for, for the most part, they usually also stick it to Christmas. I mean, you know, keep it in Christmas. And that there's the ghost of, uh, what was the uh, the, um, the Hallmark movie that came out? Um, yeah, it was uh, Boyfriend's Past, something. Boy, yeah, yeah, which uh, was kind of a take off the like obviously oh, oh, Christmas Carol, but McConaughey's right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. They were doing the McConaughey movie, but also doing it at Christmas. So you know, that's very, layered. Very, very that's efficient layered. Hallmark. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's that's very layered right there. I I can appreciate it, I guess. Mm. Um, but last week, Bishop's wife, which if right. you recall, I wasn't as high on as uh, you and others. Many people got to me and they said, "I can't believe." You didn't love it, so maybe I do need to rewatch it, and maybe. I will, and I will, I will be, I, I'll, I'm open to that. Okay. Um, but, but we're doing the remake uh, yes. this this week, uh, 1996 version, uh, and he had me at Denzel. Uh, there's few <laughs> people that I just love to watch on screen more, and I don't even know if there is anyone that I like to watch on screen more wow. than Denzel. Like I just think it just works for me, like across the board, across genres. I just love Denzel. 
Who is sure. that for you? Who is that for you that you just like, anytime he's on screen, this is it for me. Hmm. Hmm. Good question. Uh, I are mean, you allowed to get excited about actors as a critic? Sure, or do you yeah. have to just play it safe? I don't you know. I mean, look, every, we all have our favorites and we all have ones that we think, Ooh, this is going to be great. And then it doesn't always deliver, but like, you know, I'm more of a character actor person. Like gotcha. you tell me that Margot Martindale is in your movie, you know, or like Paul Giamatti. I'm like, yes. Um, I do love Paul Giamatti. Yeah. So that I, I tend to get pumped for folks like that more than for stars, but I, there, mean, there, there, there are great, there are some great ones, obviously. I will go to bat. For Lady in the Water, any day of the Ooh, week, pal. Bold. You got M Night. You, you making it? You got Paul Giamatti. Come on. That, what more do you want? It was written for me. That movie. That movie is one of one of many films that craps on film critics. But what's hilarious is that Bob Balaban is doing a perfect imitation of an actual film critic who I know. And every time I see him in the oh, movie, wow. I'm like it's like, oh, it's it's so weird to watch because he's he has nailed this guy's like mannerisms and manner of speech down so well that it's it's a little disconcerting that's funny that's funny all right are you ready to dive into this movie oh let's do it uh the preacher's wife originally uh was released not long before christmas december 13th 1996 mm. by how the um release dates <laughs> have changed like this yeah. would be released november 1st easy for right? sure yeah, yeah um 1996 and it went a little something like this this movie is uh, told, in a sense, from the uh, eyes of a child. His name is Jeremiah, and he's guiding us through the journey of this movie. We meet Reverend Henry Biggs, who is the pastor. He's not a bishop. Not anymore, kids. This is a pastor uh, of a small church that's struggling. But boy, do they have a choir. <laughs> New York, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what churches you're going to. But don't run <laughs> to this church if for no other reason than the choir. Um, and Henry's struggling. He's trying to figure out how to best care for the needs of the people that he pastors but also how to keep the church afloat due to a lot of financial struggles. He's uh, under a lot of pressure from a real estate developer. His name is Joe, and he's trying to make everything fancy, like with malls and tennis courts and whatnot. Um, and Henry, in the midst of all that is going on, has um, grown further and further apart from his wife, Julia, who also leads the choir, and his son, Jeremiah, who's telling the story. And he begins to pray one day that uh, God would send help. And that comes in the form of an angel named Dudley. The angel Dudley. Um, and he's going around and he's trying to, one, convince them that he is an angel and he's there to help. But also try to, you know, help nudge him in the right direction. Christmas is coming. The money is getting serious. His wife is growing further apart. Um, apparently, the guy, the the bad real estate guy, now holds the mortgage of the church. Everything is looking bad, and it's finally time for Dudley to just take a, a Dudley to help uh, him take a step back and look at life and get passionate once again about his wife and his church not just taking everything lying down. So Dudley gives him a little nudge, maybe knocks him down in the snow to play for a little bit, all sorts of good stuff. And uh, at the night that he's supposed to tell his church that they are going to be shutting down, he gives an impassioned speech about how they will fight. And in the crowd is the real estate developer who is loving it as he should because the choir is phenomenal new york what are you doing <laughs> and so he says you know what we'll take care of it no problem uh but you can have the church back basically everybody in the church is excited him and his wife grow closer together and as they're walking away they don't remember who dudley is at all and they come home to a decorated christmas tree and that my friends was the preacher's wife there you go. Let's uh, take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll break this episode down or this movie down here on Deck the Homer. Welcome back, everybody. We are talking Preacher's Wife, the uh, remake 
of the 1947 classic, The Bishop's Wife. Uh, let's talk about it. Alonzo, I'm going to start with you. Uh, I believe you told me that you had seen this movie before, so I'm interested in your thoughts uh, on it now that you've rewatched it and how you think it compares to the original source. So, yeah, this was one I did not get around to seeing it in 96 when it came out. Um, but I did take a look at it when I was writing uh, Have Yourself a Movie Little Christmas. Uh-huh. And, you know, at the time I remember thinking, like, it's fine. It's OK. It's just it doesn't it doesn't stick in the memory the way Bishop's Wife does. But then rewatching it now, like especially on the heels of a rewatch of The Bishop's Wife this movie has a lot of problems. I don't think it holds up nearly as well. Like it is 15 minutes longer than the original, but it feels an like an hour. Like it, 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 it there's so much like time where it's spinning its wheels. Um, the, you know, it, it is clearly created as a showcase to let Whitney Houston sing as often as possible. And that's not a bad thing. There's certainly. nothing wrong with nothing that. Nothing wrong with that, but they don't incorporate it into the film all that well. And like it, they introduced the notion that basically like that Dudley and Julia are falling in love, which is like that complicates matters needlessly. And then also uh, the fact that like Dudley doesn't seem to do all that much. Like when you compare the way that he wins over the mean rich person in the original movie compared to the conversation that Denzel Washington and, and uh, Gregory Hines have. And then the, the, you know, Gregory Hines going to the church and hearing the sermon it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't click as well for me. I think the kid's narration is annoying. Um, I, I, you know, yes, Denzel Washington and, and uh, Whitney Houston have insane chemistry t- to the extent where you think, why is she still with this, this stiff? She should run off with the dead guy. Um, and then I don't know. I just, I, I don't think it works as well. And there are other issues along the way, which I think a lot of which can be attributed to the fact that you have an all black remake of a classic movie that is written and directed by white people. Mm-hmm. which I think would never fly now. I think the, in the ensuing 25 years, like Denzel Washington, whose production company made this movie would be like, no, 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 we're not, we're not doing that. We're, we're going to have like black writers who understand this world and a black director who understands this world. Cause I think there's a lot of stuff in here that feels like uh, we have to drag in. You know, there needs to be a liquor store holdup in this Christmas movie. There has to be like urban blight. It can't just be about a black community and a black preacher, you know, and a black angel. It has to also be about like the troubles of today, which in the time that I've been doing like Max film and other stuff where you talk to people of color, they're like, we don't want every movie to be about the struggle. We want glossy fun fantasy too. And this is like a holiday movie with Whitney Houston singing. It doesn't need all the sort of like, you know, urban stuff that about, you know, like the, uh, the, 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 the neighborhood poverty or whatever that this movie keeps dragging in. And it doesn't really flow with the feel of it. I don't know. Those are my thoughts. This was your ter- first time watching it. Yes. Yes. I understand all of what you just said. (laughs) I love this movie. Okay. We're just like, it's like everything that I said about last week's, I felt like you, aside from the (laughs) the, the urban stuff, I feel like you said about this week's and I, I love this. I thought it was great. And maybe I am blinded by the amazingness that is uh, the music in this movie. And I don't care how they use it. I, Mm. it, it was great. I, it was so good from the, the opening uh, choir scene, the first time in the church where they're just doing stuff. I'm like, man, this is good. This is good stuff. And I listen, I love, I love Denzel. And I thought, um, I thought of uh, 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 Courtney B Vance. I thought he did. It had a great performance in this movie. He is actually good. Yes. But I'm just saying like to have to stand up next to the two of them, you know, it's like, that's a, that's a tricky thing to sell to an audience. But I'll say this, his performance is the, was the uh, biggest takeaway for me in this movie. Huh? Obviously okay. like the music is great, but like that performance I, I felt like it was uh, really great. I, I didn't think, th- I know that it was two hours because I started and I was like, oh man, I did not plan my day accordingly. <laughs> uh, but I didn't feel, I didn't feel like it was spinning its wheels as much as the one last week was. I felt like it moved at a, a decent pace. I was never bored personally. And so uh, I, I loved it. And I'm, I, I, and I'm, I'm not sorry. No, look, you and I have different takes on stuff. Obviously, like, I think I'm kind of forcing you to understand how black and white movies work. That's not a thing that you have 
exposed yourself to and so i get it it's like you have to that's a different rhythm for older movies and that kind of thing i you know i know from listening to your reviews here that if a movie incorporates music well or incorporates good music that that's definitely a big plus for you and frankly in looking at these two back to back i'm going to say this and i don't think this all this hardly ever comes up when we talk about these movies certainly not hallmark movies because they've they've with the exception of the godwick movies i think they really make it a point to kind of ride a, a middle ground as much as possible I found the sort of religious aspects of this movie to be a lot more overbearing than they were in Bishop's Wife. I think Bishop's Wife, yes, they acknowledge obviously that there is a heaven, there are angels, there is a God, there is, you know, all this kind of stuff happening, but it's with a wink and it's very light and it's very charming. And this movie really hits you with that, like, you know, with 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 the sort of more bible aspects, I think, of this story. And there were moments where I was kind of like, okay, yes. Like, you were, I'm already buying that there's an angel in this movie. You don't have to keep selling me on that fact, you know? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I just, they're just, I don't, I, I don't think that this movie has the light touch that the first one does. And I genuinely think that if you were to make this movie now, and you were going to have somebody like, I don't know, uh, you know, Ava DuVernay direct it or somebody who has a t- who grew up going to a black church and would understand the the sort of minutia and and the 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 niceties of that world and how it operates, you know, the, sp- the specificities of how that functions. So often to me, I just kind of felt like this is a movie that's written by and directed by people who are sort of guessing at what this is even going to look like. And so you get like. Like the like Loretta Devine, one of the great performers. She was one of the original Dream Girls, for God's sake. This movie just disappears her for big chunks of the film. Sure. Like that, that is such a waste of an opportunity there. You know, Jennifer Lewis, bless. I always love her and this stuff. And she has exactly the kind of Jennifer Lewis role that you want to see her do. And so she's a delight. I mean, yeah, I didn't like hate this. But and and if I'd never seen Bishop's Wife, I'd probably be kinder to it. But having just seen the Bishop's Wife, which I think is a is a stone cold classic, this to me just kind of feels like it's like watching that Marlo Thomas version of It's a Wonderful Life. It's like eh, I appreciate the effort, but you're not you're not quite capturing the same magic. Yeah, I will say the 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 Bishop's Wife is an un, it's unfair uh, because I, you get to watch a master class of singing in this movie mm-hmm. um and not just by whitney but by the whole choir the whole mm-hmm. the whole gospel sound in this movie yeah i think it's uh, the Ad- atlanta something choir that uh, which i found fa- i found this out and i, I don't want to uh, misspeak but i believe it's the best-selling gospel album of all time that's what the wiki page says yeah i don't know if that's true or not but that's what it says and i, I can buy it because it's so dang good and so that there's that that's not a, that's not fair for me who, who loves music and also loves gospel music like to go into this and just see a master class is mm. uh, an, an unfair advantage for the poor bishop over there. Uh, <laughs> that, there's nothing I can do it like I, I can't even re- divorce it from it. I, it's so hard for me at this point. I, it's hard for me to think what I would feel about this movie if the music wasn't such a a part of it. And that's on me at the end of the day and not on anyone else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my takeaway here is buy the album, you know, buy the album. <laughs> you know, for sure. But the movie, eh. yeah, no, I, I understand all, all, all the points you brought up are more than fair. And I love this movie. So there you go. Uh, let's talk about Christmas feels, yes. shall we? Um, we were both in agreement last week. I think you had a 7.5. I had an 8.5. Yeah. Uh, last week. So very high on the Christmas. Where were you at with this one, Alonzo? I mean, maybe like a 6.5. I think there's, this is, this is a movie that has more slush than snow in it, <laughs> but there are definitely some moments. I, I love where, um, one of my favorite scenes actually is where they're delivering like the gift bags and, and he knocks them over in the snow and they sort of like have that moment of levity. And it's like, you know, it is, it's one of the first times you see Henry like laugh yeah. in the movie, you know, and sort of like, like have some lightness to it. So, you know, yeah, I, I would say that, but I, I didn't, again, it doesn't, it, to me, it doesn't deliver the feels as solidly as its predecessor. Um, 
I was higher than you last week. I'm lower than you this week. Oh, so okay. 5.5. All the Christmas stuff that last week's movie does well, this movie doesn't do. Mm. Um, like we get a nice skating scene, not nearly as magical. No. We we get a Christmas tree in this movie, not nearly as magical as that iconic scene. Yeah. And you're right, it is more slush. I was reading about like the production kept getting delayed because there was like uh blizzards and stuff but then they had to go uh, film into when it got too warm and so yeah. it was like this whole mess of a, a thing and they ended up going like three months for like longer than they planned on and it's a whole thing so weather's tricky and it did feel very slushy and just uh, you know but you do get uh you, you do get whitney singing joy to the world um and sure. <laughs> what, more, what more can he ask for there so uh a 5.5 for me significantly lower than last week but there are still christmas feels to be had um and i would consider this a christmas movie so oh well yeah yeah no 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 question i think both of them absolutely operate within the sphere of christmas and christmas is a motivating factor behind a lot of the stuff that's going on and you know the big sermon at the end is the christmas sermon which is important so yeah no question uh, shall we compare? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think... know what you do at this point because you compared <laughs> last week, but right. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, you know, I could recommend another, another Denzel movie where I think he is, he's not playing a Cary Grant role, but I think he's bringing a real sort of Cary Grant energy to it. Uh, it's a movie called Mississippi Masala, which uh, actually Criterion is going to be putting out in the next couple of months on Blu-ray, which I'm very excited about because it was one of those movies that, you know, you, we had this conversation about how, you know, you think everything is on streaming. And I'm like, no, no, you got to get physical media because stuff goes away. There's actually this website now called missingmovies.org. Oh. And it, they're, they're sort of tracking all of these movies from like the 80s and 90s that, you know, they were released in theaters. They came out on VHS. And then like, good luck finding them now because of some some weird copyright thing or whatever. And Mississippi Masala was on that list. Um, but it is now coming out from Criterion, which I'm excited about. It stars Denzel Washington and uh, Sarita Chowdhury, who is an actress I like a lot, who if you just watched the uh, And Just Like That, which was the, the revival of, of Sex and the City on HBO Max, she uh, has a, plays a major character in that. She's the, she's the glamorous um, real estate uh, agent who becomes Carrie's friend. Um, she also pops up in the new movie after Yang. Anyway, it was like, I think her first movie still pretty early for, for Denzel. This is like 1990 ish or so. And it's directed by, um, Amir Nair who did queen of Cotway and monsoon wedding. And it's this sort of star crossed love story. Uh, she is a, you know, she's from a, a, a an Indian family living in Mississippi. Um, and you know, he is, uh, not Indian, but they fall in love anyway, despite the sort of, you know, uh, 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 complications that arise from their respective families and communities. Uh, but they have crazy chemistry and he is super charming. And yeah, I mean, Denzel is a very, very watchable movie star, but I think very often a lot of his roles kind of are humorless or at least grumpy, you know? And so to see That's him fair. just, to see him be a like just, Full on romantic lead is a lot of fun. So keep an eye out for that one when it's coming out later this year. Mississippi Masala. Denzel has a great smile. It's a he does. iconic smile. It's great. Um, I'm going to, uh, I try to recommend a Hallmark movie when I can. And while <laughs> I was watching this movie, it made me think of um, Christmas in Harmony from this past year. Oh, okay. Namely, yeah. the, the choir. gospel choir saving the church that is in sure. financial need. Um, it gave no angel in that movie, but it did give me those vibes. And I can't like anytime I'm like a Hallmark movie pops up in my mind like that. I always <laughs> like I wonder if they were inspired by the the gospel choir saving, like being this thing that kind of saves the church. Like the beauty I of the choir. General, I generally assume that anybody writing Hallmark movies is is well steeped in <laughs> the background of like Christmas classics of the past and figuring out how they can do their version. Let's do the preacher's wife. We'll take out the angel, but let's put in that bag of popcorn. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what do you think of that movie? Christmas Harmony? Uh not great. Not okay. one of my not one of my favorites this year. Um and I was excited about it um because I think that was the one that Rusty Cundiff directed, who did yeah. Fear of a Black Hat and and Tales from the Hood. Um but uh, yeah, it didn't really kind of didn't hold together for me all the way. Is that is that the is that the bump into each other with donuts movie? Or yes, pies? We bump into each other with pies. Yeah. Um and one of actually 
probably definitely the worst lip sync of <laughs> It's tough. Yeah. It was a tough one, but it did give me those vibes while I was watching this. And so that's my recommendation. If you want to uh, do a homework, you know, or just watch the angel movie, whatever, whatever you want to do is fine. <laughs> if you really need the angel, um, <laughs> they, they, you can do those. There's plenty of those. If you must out. watch an angel falls movie, watch the first one, not the second one. <laughs> did the one that aired on the other network, that was angel falls right this year. Yeah. yeah they, but I don't, I, I think that was just the name of the town and that was, so the there's place. not freezing angels. Look, I didn't watch it, so I, I have been watching that other network. But my understanding was there weren't any angels freezing or otherwise in it. All right, all right. Well, you took the one good thing. <laughs> <laughs> all you had to give Brand was Freeze Boy, and he'd be good. That's exactly right. I'm sold. I'm so, I'm so I'm such a gimmick I, I, of a person. <laughs> <laughs> Just so easily uh, swayed. Um, all right, let's dive into what we're gonna do over the next couple weeks. It's yes. not a secret from us, and so Alonzo, sure. I'll let you take it away. Uh, we're cool. changing a little bit. This doing these two kind of inspired us in this yeah. next uh, next journey. So I, my plan had been to stay in 1947 because it's all happening in 1947. Here's the crazy thing. I had another 1947 movie <laughs> that I'd take off the list because it's not streaming anywhere. What but movie was that? Uh, it's a movie called um, I'll Be Seeing You with uh, Ginger Rogers and Joseph Cotton, which is this amazing like post-World War II movie. He is a soldier uh, dealing with what they used to call shell shock, but we now know is PTSD, right. who basically takes, um, uh, goes on leave from this institution where he's staying, basically to decide whether or not he wants to re-enter the world or just like lock himself away forever. Wow. She is in prison, uh, having committed manslaughter against a boss who tried to date rape her. And they still sent her to jail for that. And she's on like a holiday leave to go visit relatives. They meet on the train. Neither of them tells the other one what's really going on in their lives. And they fall in love. And it's this whole complicated Christmas thing of like, where's she going to go? Where's he going to go? But it's beautiful and moving. And, uh, you know, it, it, Kino Lorber put out a Blu-ray a couple of years ago. I highly recommend it, but it's not streaming. Is so she I out on bail? Out. Basically, yeah. For manslaughter? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like she gets to go home, get to home, go home, spend Christmas with her aunt and uncle and her cousin played by a, a, a somewhat more grown up Shirley Temple. Um, but then at the end of the holidays has to go back to jail. So it's all like, is she going to tell him? Is he going to tell her? It's it's really great. So I recommend 40s, you check it out. The 40s are wild. Man. They are wild. But since it's not streaming, I decided not to do it here. But I, we couldn't leave 1947 behind without tapping into one of the great Christmas movies of all time. One of the few Oscar winning Christmas movies. Wow. And that of course would be miracle on 34th street. And so on the heels of the Bishop's wife, preacher's wife thing, it was like, well, duh, let's do the 1947 miracle on 40, 34th street. And then let's do the 1994 miracle on 34th street. So that's what we're doing for the next two episodes. I'm very excited about this because the 1994 miracle is the only one that I have seen. Uh -huh. And it's a it's a yearly viewing for me, so I'm excited to see uh, the source material for that movie, uh, where basically it's just Matilda at Christmas. So, uh, <laughs> well, this went look the original is Natalie Wood at Christmas, and okay. uh, and Edmund Gwen who plays Chris Kringle won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, so it's pretty great. I think I hope I hope I hope you'll like it. I'm very excited about this. This is one of those movies just like um, uh, It's a Wonderful Life a few years ago that I had never seen. And it was a shame to say that I had never seen because of how much I love Christmas. So I do sure. feel like this is another um, badge that I can finally get to put on my Christmas vest. <laughs> that, you know, like there's like a, a slot, a spot missing, like, and I yes. just kind of cover it up and hope people don't ask. <laughs> on and your so, sash. Yeah, I'm happy that I can finally get that badge. So I'm very, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent. So yeah, everybody, uh, come, come back for the next couple of weeks. We have, we, we have, uh, some, some fun Macy's versus Gimbel's, uh, discussion ahead and, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Love it. Until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam podcast network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com. Boom.
Excellent. Let's just do the same thing we did this week. Next week, I like doing it all together. If it's yeah, no, I, 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 absolutely. All right, cool. See you then. All sir. right, good to see Enjoy. you, buddy. Bye.